Uh, our uh, focus tonight, I want you to go to a website, is RainaHawk.com. Go to RainaHawk.com. And if you're looking for a book with suspense and murder and uh, love, then check out the Valentine Petrillo series by Raina Hawk. The series follows Janie Valentine. Janie Valentine is on a journey from a small town in Louisiana. I know a little something about that. We still have listeners uh, all over the great state of Louisiana in Houma, uh, of course, closer to the big city in uh, Metairie and Kenner, and then, of course, on charters uh, downtown. But still, if you get down the other parts of the state, we have listeners all over uh, the bayou country of Louisiana. I love it down there. Anyway, uh, she comes from the main character, Janie. Valentine, uh, a small town in Louisiana. Uh, then she marries into one of New York's biggest crime families. Raina Hawk is going to uh, join us tomorrow evening at 7.05. She is the author of the psychological thriller, The Alter Ego of Insanity, and the true events, uh, Paranormal Angels and Arrows. The books are available at various locations, including Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, uh, Smashwords, or you, know, you can just get it uh, by visiting RainaHawk.com. Let me spell that for you, R-E-Y-N-A-H-A-W-K.com. Now, I mentioned the kids a moment ago uh, for two reasons. Number one, I say kids. Don't forget what kids are when Ed Till says kids. Ed Till's always talking about the kids 18, 19, 25, and 30. So you know how excited you get when, you, as a parent, you see him reading. Oh, God, look, they're reading a book. Then they say, you know, I really like reading. You know where I can get my hands on something good, Mom? Dad, you say Ed Till going on and on about this RainaHawk.com, R-E-Y-N-A-H-A-W-K.com. So get over there. And now here's the thing I love. This is what I find really cool. The Valentine Petrillo series books that we're talking about here, Janie Valentine and her, her adventures, okay, are all available in one convenient ebook. Saves you a ton of money. Now, books are fun, and ebooks are just more fun. So go to RainaHawk.com, see what we mean, read what we mean, and tomorrow night, get ready uh, to meet this great author and uh her series, you know, I, I said earlier, uh, I'm sure there's going to be a movie and DVDs and all that stuff to follow. I get ahead of myself right now. Let's just read the e-books together and have a, have a good time with Raina Hawk. And go to her website, RainaHawk.com. Of course, you get the books on Amazon. And it's called the Valentine Petrillo series by author and our special uh, subject of the evening as an artist, but also uh, our special guest tomorrow evening. We're actually going to hear from the author, uh, Raina Hawk, on the Ed Till Show. Congratulations, Raina, on a uh, great, uh, spectacular uh, piece of work. Spectacular. If you're uh, a fan of psychological thrillers, uh, the alter ego of insanity. Now, are you a, a fan of true events, paranormal? angels and arrows but don't miss any of it and uh check out the website she's a mother you know that's it's incredible she does all this and she's got time uh to be a mom and to be an amazing storyteller and be a big success so that makes us feel great uh here on the show we love being a part of that all right the ed till show and earlier today here's here's what matters about the trayvon martin case i'm going to play you the most important thing. Now, you're going to hear these clips in shorter and shorter version, right, from others. I'm going to give you the context. I'm not going to sensationalize this trial. I, I realized today, I made my prediction, it's on Twitter, uh, Zimmerman will be found not guilty. And he will be found not guilty in a very similar, yet you won't recognize the similarity, but in a very similar way uh, to Casey Anthony. Casey Anthony was another case where everybody thought they had their mind made up, they, they knew what was going on, this is the deal, blah, 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 and of course so many people were wrong, yours truly was right, and people said, how could Ed Till, what, what is Ed Till, did Ed Till rig the jury, is, is he part of that Gene Hackman movie, The Runaway, no, man, come on, man, come on, man, man, why are you, what's up with you? I'll straighten you right out. You want to, now I'm going to straighten you out on something else in about t uh, two minutes, but I'm going to tell you right now about this. I'm going to straighten you straight away, get you pointed in the right direction. I'm going to illustrate it tonight on the show. You're going to uh, find it an unmistakable uh, reality. But I'm going to explain it to you very simply. Casey Anthony, same thing. The law is built 
so that you are innocent until proven guilty. You show up, and if all you're doing is standing there, and they got nothing, and, and you don't say nothing, then you are uh, free as a bird. That's it. You're, you're done. You are legally not guilty. They have to let you out of there, and that's the end of the name of that tune. Goodbye. On the other hand, uh, when it's overwhelmingly uh, that you did it and they got 90,000 ways of evidence, they can drown you in DNA this and fingerprint that and black light, you know, uh, bacteria. The so this is the way it works today. Very few cases are like, oh, God, nobody knows. Oh, wow. Oh, God. Oh, that, that's uh, in Perry Mason days when I was a kid or, you know, some stupid TNT series that I haven't caught up with, but I'm sure has some old actors that I like in them. Is that they're new the way they do? So here's what's going to happen in this case. It happened in Casey Anthony. The law is written. So that if it's not beyond a reasonable doubt, uh, a, to a moral certainty, if you can't uh, put out all reasonable doubt, you can't convict. Now, are people angry at George? Yes. Do people wish George had not gone out? Yeah, people, you can wish anything you want, but you put a law out there called the Stand Your Ground Law, and, you know, he looks exactly like a case study in the law. They used to be called the castle law, and it was like, you know, a man's home, a person's home is their castle. You come near the castle, I shoot you, and that's me defending myself. I don't have to wait for you to put a bullet hole in me before I plug you. That's, this law is taking it outside your house. Now, George, from the neighborhood, George, who knows what he's doing, George, who's trying to be helpful, is in the middle of something that got out of hand for George. George couldn't handle it, obviously. It, it, it looks like George was smashed onto the ground, and he's got the injuries to prove it. And it sounds like George was screaming for help because the, the, the kid that he was uh, following was beating him up. And now the quotes come. We heard today in the courtroom. You're going to hear this. I'm going I'm to let you hear it all, but I just want you to know what's coming here. You're going to hear that the, uh, the, the kid says, what do you, why are you following me for? You know why I know that's an excellent quote? Because that's exactly the syntax I've been listening to uh, in, in New York City, in Los Angeles, in Chicago, in Miami, in Atlanta, my entire life. It's, in my entire life, that angry, what are you looking at me for? What are you watching me for? What are you following me for? Well, you'll hear the testimony. Now, do I like this lawyer, Don West? He drives me nuts. Uh, is he doing a good job? He's doing a phenomenal job. And I'll tell you what, annoying me is not on his agenda of things to do and care about. He's really focused on, this is what we know, this is what we don't know. This is what we can all agree to, and this is where the argument is. Now, could he still lose the case? Of course. Could the case come out uh, contrary to my prediction? Hardly ever happens, but yes. It's possible. I doubt it. There's no way you're going to get 12 people to overreach on your behalf. There is that family in the uh, audience there, in the, in the uh, uh, visitor's gallery. Big argument, should they be there? Uh, everybody knows how they make everybody feel. How do they make me feel? I mean, I, I'm, I, that poor father, I know how that father feels. I know, I know what's going on with that father. I don't know everything he feels. He, know, he feels a lot of things I would never be privy to. Everybody's an individual. I have never been the father of his son that was, uh, had his life taken. So that part, he's got me, you know, uh, five aces against me. I'm dead on that one. But here's the one I'm not dead on. I know a lot about being uh, an adult and looking back and saying, geez, did I do the right thing? I know a lot about that because my family believes in that. My religion as a, a kid was all reflective. It was very good to have it long before, you know, uh, Dr. Joyce Brothers and everybody started writing books about, you got to get introspective. You got to talk to yourself. Long before that, we would examine. It was called examine your conscience. And I know that that father's pain. I can see it in that father's eyes, and I feel for that father. I want to reach into that television sometimes, just give him a hug, because I, I feel what he's feeling. And that is, damn it, how did I, as the adult guardian of my son, my son walking around this planet, my son walking around 40, 50 miles from my house down in Miami, my son, how did I, a grown man, not prepare my son to protect himself. Not to, uh, did you prepare him to be tough? Of course, of course, everybody gets toughened up today. There's no such thing as growing up soft. They were talking about soft for George today. They were talking about how George is soft today. All right, look, I'm not going to argue George is a little bit soft. That's possible. I'm talking about Trayvon. I'm talking about these kids that today are in high school. George is not in high school anymore. Trayvon's in high school today in uh, you know the era of 2011, 2012, when he tragically loses his life in February. That, that poor kid is another one. You think I don't feel for that kid? You think I don't want to pull that kid back 10 steps and say, shut up. Just go home.
Don't face him off. He's looking out for his neighborhood. You know what kind of world it is. Go home. No. As the Don West pointed out today. If anything, uh, Trayvon, uh, Trayvon spoke to Chantel. You can hear about this. Not his girlfriend. A friend. Female. Not his girlfriend. But there's a phone call with Chantel. You're going to hear about You're going to hear all this stuff. So when you get the evidence, this is what, uh, it, it, to me, is becoming a big pattern in public trials. Oscar Pistorius had this quality. Jody Arias had this quality. Casey Anthony had this quality. You really started to get up closer to modern trials with OJ, and that's coming up on 10 years ago. So this is, and the, and the OJ trial long after the OJ apprehension. I think OJ was apprehended in 94. You'd have to go back and, and check the Wikipedia, because there'll be off by one year, just subtract it or add a year. Plus, they should put Wik Wik Wikipedia should be called plus or minus. Or my, I like my favorite is más o menos. <laughs> ¿Cómo está, Eduardo? Ah, más o menos bien. Más o menos. So anyway, that's a story. Uh, it's coming up in a second. But before I do that, even, I got another killer, amazing thing for you. One other killer, amazing thing. <laughs> Ed Till has more killer, amazing things on your show. And I'll tell you, it's really, uh, it's getting annoying. He's, every time you listen to Ed now, he seems to have some killer, amazing thing on the show. So, you know, what kind of killer amazing thing? Are you, what, are you, what are you saying? Killer amazing thing? You mean like, like he's got cars that fly? He's got goldfish that taste good? You can just raise them and then you just... You, they taste like M&Ms. They're so delicious. And they're really just goldfish. And it's a, it's a way of, you know, raising your own fish. It's kind of like having a, kind of like having a catfish farm right, in your, right in, your, in your playroom in the house. You put goldfish in there. You have a couple for lunch, and they, they, they reproduce the next day. It's, it's amazing. Amazing things all the time on the show. I, I don't make any of this up. This is all what people bring to me, and I'm always extraordinarily impressed by it. I will tell you that. I, I'm never not impressed by it. 